my fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. In the wake of the September 11th terrorist attacks, President George W. Bush signed a joint resolution into law authorizing the use of force against groups and nations responsible for the attacks. On October 7, 2001, less than a month after the tragedy, President Bush announced the beginning of strikes on Al-Qaeda and Taliban compounds in Afghanistan. This was the start of Operation Enduring Freedom and is regarded as the first large-scale military operation of the global war on terror. Over the next 20 years, forces would fight unprecedented battles in various nations throughout the Middle East, all in the name of the global war on terror. However, two of the most infamous battles of this period both took place in Fallujah, Iraq. What caused the first battle of Fallujah? What was the importance of both battles? And was the result of the conflict worth the lives that were lost? Let's try and find out. Hello, I'm Mike Joberg, Marine Corps veteran and filmmaker, and we will try to answer these questions on today's episode of Forgotten History. On March 20th, 2003, Operation Iraqi Freedom had officially begun. U.S. and coalition forces invaded Iraq after a series of airstrikes failed to decapitate Iraq's leadership, which reaffirmed the need for the full-scale ground invasion of the nation. By April 9th, U.S. troops stormed Baghdad, toppling the statue of Saddam Hussein. This was both a symbolic and physical victory, showcasing the fall of the Hussein regime. While the operation didn't officially conclude until December 15, 2011, as early as May 1, 2003, it was announced that all major combat operations in Iraq had ceased in a seemingly swift victory. Yet the road for this victory seemed anything but swift for the men that fought over it. Over a year after the start of the invasion, the height of ground combat operations truly began, culminating in the First Battle of Fallujah also known as Operation Vigilant Resolve. The city of Fallujah was a hotbed for the remaining Saddam Hussein loyalists and other supporting insurgents, increasing the threat of further coordinated attacks in Iraq. Located about 43 miles from the capital Baghdad, the control of Fallujah was of great tactical and strategic importance. Control of the city meant controlling one of the most important trade hubs for Iraq, and it allowed the U.S. troops to limit the growth of insurgent forces. Soldiers from the 1st Battalion, 325th Airborne Infantry Regiment were sent into Fallujah and its surrounding areas to maintain order by way of presence and patrol. After two protests of the occupation led to the death of 20 Iraqi civilians, the frequency of attacks on the U.S. presence increased and escalated in severity. When the 1st Battalion, 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, who assumed control of operations in and around Fallujah, following the fatal protest, turned over responsibility for Fallujah to the 1st Marine Division on March 24, 2004, the situation only worsened. During familiarization patrols with the Army, the Marines suffered 11 casualties. Several more incidents would take place over the coming weeks, including the death and dismemberment of four Blackwater contractors, two of which were put on display hanging from a bridge that crossed the Euphrates River. While this ultimately triggered the First Battle of Fallujah, the U.S. leadership maintains that the conflict was imminent but expedited by the atrocity, prompting near-immediate retaliation. On April 4, 2004, the U.S. forces began their near-month-long assault on the city in an attempt to re-establish security in the city. The battle resulted in the deaths of 27 U.S. servicemen along with 800 Iraqis, with an estimated 228 being insurgents both native and foreign to Iraq. 
After five weeks of heavy fighting, on May 1st, the U.S. announced a full withdrawal, handing over control of the city to the newly formed Fallujah Brigade. This 1,100-man force was comprised of Iraqi militants who were trained and armed by the U.S. in an attempt to further pacify the city. However, the Fallujah Brigade's leader and organizer, Mohammed Abdel Latif, would later disband this army and turn over all of the U.S. provider weapons to the insurgents within Fallujah. Many say the U.S. withdrawal was premature and the trust in the Fallujah Brigade resulted directly in the Second Battle of Fallujah. By November 4, 2004, after six months of mishandling, Fallujah once again became a stronghold for Iraqi resistance fighters and foreign Muslim volunteers from Algeria, Yemen, Chechnya, and many more nations. A coalition force of a combined 12,000 American, Iraqi, and British troops encircled the city. Checkpoints were established around the city to prevent insurgents from entering or leaving. In anticipation of the assault, over 300,000 civilians fled. The night of November 7th rang with artillery and airstrikes that went into the next morning, focusing on the southern and southeastern parts of the city in order to make the enemy think the assault would commence in the south and to weaken the embedded defenses of insurgents. This allowed for a lessened resistance in the north, where the majority of the invading force entered the city. The invasion began with thousands of troops flooding the now bombarded city engaging in the most intense urban combat since the Battle of Hue City in Vietnam 36 years prior. With a mixture of civilians and insurgents within the city, it was no easy task determining one from the other, especially considering the risk of many insurgents feigning innocence only to later attack when released. Many insurgents, specifically snipers, were aware of the coalition's rules of engagement which stated that no mosque could be fired upon unless absolutely necessary for the defense of self or unit. The insurgents, taking advantage of this, had an enhanced layer of protection that complicated how troops would proceed with such threats. Tripwires and improvised explosive devices made every building a threat, even with an absence of enemies inside. Many Marines opted to make their own entrances to buildings, using explosives to breach a wall and avoid having to use doors or even windows to enter. Once inside, the obstructed homes were difficult to navigate, with many having been set up with defenses to make traversal more difficult and to guide forces into fatal choke points. Because of the unfamiliar layouts of homes and other buildings, the uncountable windows in the streets, and in some cases, the underground tunnels made the combat impossibly difficult. There oftentimes seemed to be no right answer when it came to clearing breaching, and patrolling. These challenges left a constant need for units to adjust procedures, tactics, and boundaries within the city. After six grueling days of unforgiving urban combat, the city was declared mostly secured, with only pockets of insurgents in isolated areas still fighting. While the largest part of the battle was finished, coalition troops remained actively engaged until December 23rd, locating weapons caches, removing IEDs, and handling the remaining insurgents. Known as the bloodiest battle of the Iraq War, the Second Battle of Fallujah claimed the lives of 110 coalition forces while over 1,500 enemy combatants were killed and another 1,500 captured. The two battles for the city led to the death of 151 Americans and over 1,000 wounded, the greatest number of casualties experienced by the U.S. since the Vietnam War. An estimated 40% of Fallujah was destroyed, and by the end of 2004, including 60 mosques that were used to store weapons, explosives, and insurgents. While the operation was considered a success, the scars left behind and the lives lost will make Fallujah a solemn reminder of the sacrifice of U.S. and coalition troops and the cost of war. Thank you for watching Forgotten History. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments or show ideas, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks again.